Yeah, hello. Uh, we, we want uh, to talk about, yeah, we are here in the extension track, and we want to talk about one particular extension point, uh, which is the operating system in Cloud Foundry. So we at Zuse, as an operating system vendor, of course, have a, a specific interest in that and also specific knowledge. So we want to talk about uh, the role of the operating system within Cloud Foundry and how you can extend that, how you can go to another operating system and use that. Who are we? So my name is Cornelius Schumacher. I'm a distinguished engineer at Zuse. Um, I have done the dojo in the Bosch team last year and have uh, worked in the OpenStack CPI team for, for almost a year. And nowadays, I'm mostly uh, managing the European part of the engineering team, working on our Cloud Foundry product at Zuse. OK, I'm Mario. Um, I've been uh, with Zuse for one and a half year and uh, been working on the stem cell for a while. And this year in March, I uh, went to the dojo. And ever since then, I've been working on the OpenStack CPI team at SAP with Bosch and stuff. Cool. So where are we coming from? Um, operating systems are nice, uh, but actually, if we take the developer perspective, this is the Cloud Foundry haiku. Here's my source code. Run it on the cloud uh, for me. I don't care how. As a developer, I actually don't care about the operating system. Um, that's a beautiful platform that you don't have to do that. And if we look into the architecture of Cloud Foundry in a very simplified form, from a user's point of view, from an application developer's point of view, the user application is running somewhere on the platform. There's Cloud Foundry to interact with via the API, via the command line client. There are services which can be brought in, and this is running on some infrastructure. As a developer, I don't really care how this happens. But if we look a little bit deeper what actually is in there, and that's more going into the operator's perspective, then we actually see that there are certain components required. So the user application is running in containers. Um, they need a stack, a language runtime to run on, which is provided by the build packs. And this has to run on something in the container, which is providing the root file system, which is an operating system. So that's one green box where we have an operating system in Cloud Foundry, and we call that the stack. If we look at the infrastructure, um, this is usually running on virtual machines. And each virtual machine, of course, needs an operating system so it can run the containers or the services in Cloud Foundry which are required. And uh, this operating system is the second uh, part where Cloud Foundry has this built-in operating system. And that's what we usually call the stem cell. Where we are coming there from, from SUSE, from the SUSE point of view, why we are interested in that, so Zuse just celebrated its uh, 25th uh, birthday. This is one, one of the birthday cakes um, a couple of our engineers created. Um, I don't know how tasty they were, but they at least look beautiful. And these 25 years uh, are actually us doing Linux operating systems, building operating systems, distributing operating systems, and extending to, to other uh, products um, as well as Cloud Foundry now. So for us, um, we do uh, a distribution for the community, a community-driven distribution, OpenSUSE, which is feeding into our enterprise distribution, SUSE Linux Enterprise. And uh, th that's the two variants we, we provide to the community, to customers, to users, um, and where we also then add our enterprise support for the enterprise version, for example, where we have people working upstream, we have kernel developers, we are able to fix a lot of problems there, and we know how, how to build this stuff. And so that's where our natural interest, of course, to extend the reach of Cloud Foundry to our customers who expect that it's running on SUSE, that we are putting SUSE into Cloud Foundry. Yeah, and that's, a, that's the two areas. And we will start with the stem cell. And that's where Mario is taking over. Right. Um, so the, the stem cell um, is um, basically uh, what's Bosch using to put on the VMs. And on the second part of the talk, we will also um, talk about how we built the um, root file system layer for the fissile um, stem cell we have for the SUSE Cloud Foundry product. But so this is classic Bosch land here. We have an infrastructure at the bottom. And on top of that, you have your operating system. And um, so the operating system is very much here. And um, Bosch is very much designed to have different kinds of stem cells. Um, for example, if you look at the Bosch IO homepage, we have the Ubuntu Trusty based stem cells. Ubuntu Trusty is like uh, three years old by now and will be supported for, I don't know, one and a half year. Then you will have to switch to something to get security updates. And there are also two other kinds of stem cells. It's the Windows stem cell and the CentOS stem cell. I 
I don't have much experience with them, but uh, in the end, you probably want to run Cloud Foundry on them, and I don't know if they are there yet. Um, so this is where we are at the moment, and um, usually the stem cell um, comes into Cloud Foundry or into your Bosch deployment by doing this little dance where you upload the stem cell, then you upload the releases you want to have in your deployments, and then you deploy a manifest. And that's when you, you create this little box here on the right side with the VM, which has the stem cell and the stack of releases you want to put on the operating system, and uh, a Bosch agent running on top. And um, the Bosch agents is actually, um, this is that GitHub repository here, which has a lot of changes in it, and it does platform-specific um, stuff, like uh, configure networking, partition a hard disk, so uh, um, set up an SSH user. That's all done by Bosch uh, and by the agent, and uh, that's why we had to change it, because um, uh, on OpenSUSE, some of this stuff is different, right? Because you, uh, you might have certificates in a different place or so. And um, the second part we had to change was the Bosch uh, Linux stem cell builder. And this is a separate repository, I think, uh, since the beginning of this year, uh, which made development so much easier. So to not have it all in one big Bosch repository, but to have like a separate repository for that. So this is where you have stages um, which are used to uh, create an image of your operating system. And there are several stages here. Like, um, there are stages which are used to create the OS base image layer, which is basically um, just what uh, dbootstrap produces for you if you're running Ubuntu or Debian, like a change routable file system. Or um, if you're using OpenSUSE, it would be done by um, Kiwi. And uh, on top of that, you have a stem cell layer, and the stages are not so uh, aligned to these layers. There's some mix up in there, but um, there's stuff here, for example, to harden it, to uh, lock down user accounts, and um, install um, drivers for your infrastructure, like uh, para-virtualization drivers or Intel network interface drivers. So this is all done here in the stem cell layer, and um, this is where we put in Kiwi. Kiwi um, I think you will talk about Kiwi later also, but um, it's really neat. You, you give it an XML file, the, and the XML is being passed uh, into uh, some specification of your operating system, and it goes and installs all the packages and tidies this up, and you end up with a table. We also added a custom kernel in here um, because we, need, uh, we still need OFS to run uh, a lot of the, um, like, concourse or, um, I don't know, some of the releases require OFS, so we had to put it in. We also have run it here um, to um, start processes, and uh, uh, we also removed some stuff like there's no Yast, in, um, in the uh, Yast is the standard um, management tool of SUSE, and it's uh, removed here from the images. So um, you would have to buy your, uh, you would have to build your own um, image to get stuff back in there, and it's not really hard in the. Uh, Bosch Linux stem cell builder, you have this file stage collection, and it's a huge file, and it just combines stages into these uh, methods, which are then called for the platform, or they call each other. Like here was the Bosch step stage, and um, just as an example, this file is really long. And these stages are just shell scripts, uh, which are executed on the change route. So in these shell scripts, you can just start changing stuff in the, on the image. And afterwards, it's all, gets, it's all um, getting packaged. So the first package that's being created is the OS image. And um, then you take the OS image in a second step, and you create like uh, the actual stem cell, which is um, kind of an image, whatever the infrastructure needs. It might be a raw disk image. It might be just be a tart up file system like it is on OpenStack. So you can actually, if you have an OpenStack stem cell, you can actually unpack it, just two tables, change uh, something, and pack it back together. Um, so yeah, that's, um, that's all what we had to do. And if you want to use it, um, it's just as easy as that. You take your deployment manifest, for example, here with Zookeeper, and um, you exchange the version and, um, and push it. Um, so that's, that's really easy, um, but you might run into trouble, into problems with um, the releases, because releases do all kinds of stuff on the operating system. They might expect certificates to be in a certain place. They might expect binaries to be in a certain place. Uh, OpenSUSE has a different binary structure than, uh, than Ubuntu has. Um, uh, Networking is a little bit different. So there, there are a lot of uh, small differences um, below. For, um, 
especially with software versions, because we are, we are currently working in OpenSUSE Leap. We are also working on um, SUSE Linux Enterprise, which is a little bit more conservative uh, regarding versions. But Leap has very new software. That means we have a new kernel. We are systemd based, um, which changes a lot. And a lot of the tools, like for partitioning, they have a new um, command line interface and might not integrate without patching Bosch Agent and uh, the Bosch Linux stem cell builder. So um, Zookeeper on uh, SUSE, um, I'm not going to do a demo because it's really easy. Uh, if you look at the stem cells, you just have, uh, for example, a warden stem cell, and you can just deploy with it. And uh, if you would log into one of these boxes with SSH, you could see that the kernel running there is uh, actually uh, open SUSE kernel and, and the process list. It's yeah, kind of what you expect, like the Bosch agent there running with the uh, open source platform. And yeah, if you want to try these stem cells, we are, we are still in the process of building them. So I think currently we only have the AWS and the open stem cell up there. Um, tests are not all green yet. We are still working on the pipelines, but this would be the URL to download them in the future. OK, um, I think uh, you want to talk about the stacking. Exactly. So that was the stem cell. One part, the other part is the stack. And that, that's how we stack at Zuse. So we, of course, stack chameleons. Awesome. You might want to get the small one out at the, uh, the Zuse booth. So the stack in Cloud Foundry, um, uh, that's, that's the part which is used in the containers running the Zuse user applications. So I showed the architecture before. So we have the user application uh, running on a language stack, which is provided by the build pack, and then running on a, a root file system uh, uh, representing the operating system in the container. So running that is uh, easy. Um, the more interesting part is how this actually is constructed and built, especially from our point of view that we want to provide an alternative stack. So if you look at the three components um, and how they are done, the first step is uh, providing the operating system, the, the OS-based container image, uh, which is used in the container. So that's the root file system, uh, and that's what, what we exchange. That's where Cloud Foundry provides uh, 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 yeah, options in the command line to actually specify the stack you want to run. Um, but you need to provide that. And that's what we are doing as an operating system vendor. We are putting our SUSE operating system into, the, uh, into that. And we'll, I will talk about how we actually do that um, in a minute. On top of that, we need uh, the build pack, which provides all the binaries, uh, the, the runtime for languages, um, what the user application actually requires. So you've also heard about that. There are many, many different build packs. There are lots of binaries. And there are upstream pipelines to build that and to construct that. And uh, we mostly use the upstream pipelines there to actually construct the build packs with the binary which fit the SUSE operating system image. Um, there's a lot of compiling involved there. It's, it's a lot of code. It's also different pipelines. So this is actually one of the more challenging parts where um, also the structure is not always really meant to be used in for different operating systems. So that's why we actually had to put in some, some work to get this done. And then at runtime, there's the third build step that, that is uh, actually preparing the containers, which are then run for end users. Um, that's where uh, the bits are taken, the user application is put on top of that, and then the platform takes care of providing that to the user so that the user actually doesn't see the operating system anymore. How do we build this um, base image? Um, and Mario already mentioned uh, Kiwi. Uh, so we have uh, tools we use to build our distribution. Um, and uh, to build all the packages for the distribution, also build containers. And uh, we're talking mostly about two tools here. One is Kiwi, which is our more or less universal uh, image building tool. So we use that to build our distribution images, the media, but we also use that to build uh, container images, and in this case, the, the base container image, which is uh, re required and used uh, by, by the stack. Kiwi is a tool which takes a description of the um, uh, image, which, which is nice because there's really one place, a text definition of a, of a, a container image, which says, OK, these packages and where they are coming from. And you can specify the configuration. So you really have a definitive um, description and definition of what the image is. And you can put that under version control and then run Kiwi on it. And Kiwi will always create the same image of, of that. It's XML, so um, sorry for not having a YAML file here, but uh, Kiwi, I think, predates uh, uh, the time when YAML really became uh, en vogue. Um, and XML is a fine description for that. 
Kiwi is, you can run Kiwi standalone, um, but the more interesting part actually is running it within the open build service. And the open build service is our build automation tool. Um, that's where we uh, put all the components of the distribution in, all the components which are required to build packages, to build containers. And the open build service takes care of the automation, it takes, takes care of dependency tracking, of automatic rebuilds, of dependency ch dependencies change, of having the version history, of being able to reproduce builds. So within the, with the open build service, all this build chain becomes more or less automatic and uh, really very well specified, and you can be sure that you get the same results at the same time and you are up to date, you have security updates within the images and uh, the dependencies are automatically um, uh, resolved and uh, rebuilds are done so, so that, that we uh, can actually be sure that we provide exactly the images we want in the way we want them with the security updates we want to have them and can then use them for all kinds of other things like in this case our use case is the, um, yeah, the stack for Cloud Foundry. Good. There's one more component, um, and we al already mentioned that, because we have another flavor of stem cell, actually. <clears throat> uh, we talked about the containerization of Cloud Foundry we do for our Cloud Foundry product. And there is a, it looks a little bit different. Um, so this is the architecture diagram I showed before with the virtual machines running an operating system and then running Cloud Foundry on top of that. What we do in, in our Zuse Cloud Foundry variant, uh, we put Cloud Foundry the Cloud Foundry services into containers as well and run them on Kubernetes. That means the, the, the operating system layer moves one step up and it's not required in a virtual machine anymore, but it has to become a, a root file system in a container so that we have the base there as well. And it should correspond to, the, to what the stem cell um, has been. And then Kubernetes can run on uh, whatever infrastructure is uh, below that. Uh, but we do need to create this um, equivalent to a stem cell in the container space. So we call that a fissile stem cell, uh, because fissile is the tool we use to containerize Cloud Foundry. So you heard uh, probably other presentations about how, how that works. Vlad was talking about that before. So we take a Cloud Foundry release, the Bosch release, and convert that into container images using fissile. And these container images naturally need a base image. Um, and that's what we call the fissile stem cell container image, uh, which we extract from the Bosch stem cell. So we use one source of truth there so that the Bosch stem cell we provide to the community, we provide for Bosch users. Uh, we extract the uh, base layer for our containerized versions from that um, using just, just the same build pipeline. So it's just a small modification to how, how this thing is built um, to also extract the uh, container image, which then contains the same packages, the same base, as, as the Bosch stem cell. Yeah, and that's how it runs. So we have the three components. And we do want to um, show this, uh, how this actually behaves. So we do have a small demo here of, of the stacks. OK. So this is. Um, yeah, I could, could show the cube control, right? Yeah, so we have a Cloud Foundry running here. So this is our, our version running containerized. So you see all the Cloud Foundry services. Uh, this is there. And uh, now we actually want to yeah, push an application on the SUSE stack. So if we show the stacks here, so. Um, oh, I can, can do you CF stacks? You can do CF stack, stacks. No, I can't because I can't see what I'm typing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's, that's hard. Almost there. Perfect. So, um, so our configuration is already there. So we have the standard, the default uh, CF Linux FS2 there. And we have, in addition, our OpenSUSE 42. So that's our stack built on ba uh, based on OpenSUSE 42. So that's the community version we provide to the community. Yeah, and now if we push an application, it, it will actually use this uh, the stack. So you have to add the push, yeah. Um, it, should I put the stack explicitly? Or, I mean, yeah, uh, doesn't matter. So the, okay. in our product, the OpenSUSE version is, is the default. So you can specify the stack at runtime, but you don't have to if you want to use the default. So if we push the demo app here, it will do the usual um, procedure when pushing an app. So you all know that. It will look at the build packs, download what it needs, figure out what build pack to use, and 
then uh, do all this logic we described before with staging uh, the container, uh, building the, the required uh, yeah, binaries, which, uh, putting that into, uh, into the uh, container, which is then run by the Cloud Foundry runtime. Yeah, so this takes a little bit, figuring out all the different um, build packs. Now it has found the right one. It does the magic required by the application, uploads the result, destroys the staging container, and then we have an application running. So this is our demo app here, and you can see it says here in the last line, it's running on the OpenSUSE 42 stack. So if we, just to show that we are actually running something, we're curling on the server, so there's a nice, fancy... Oh, that's a nice web page, actually. That's a nice web page. <laughs> you all speak HTML natively, so you can <laughs> imagine I, how this looks like. I, I'm sorry, we are running in a Vagrant <laughs> box here on a laptop, and it's, it's all Cloud Foundry on one device. It's so exciting. It's a full stack, but uh, I haven't figured out the firewall rules, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. yeah we, we could, we could use that. It's probably not part of the VM. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, but that's not the point we want to show here. The point actually we want to make is that this is running on, on the SUSE stack. So if we SSH into the uh, uh, container now, into the app now. I missed that one. Um, that's a typo, CF. Yeah. So if we SSH into the um, container, so now we are running into the container where the application is running, and we look at the OS release. I'm such a bad typer. Cat, there we go. So, and you can tell it's running on OpenSUSE Leap. So in the end, that's actually pretty boring. I mean. There's actually not much to see because the, uh, the application behaves exactly the same as before, but there is running on the OpenSUSE stack. Um, we are managing the operating system so the user doesn't have to uh, do so. We have shown a little bit how, how, this, how this looks like, uh, what we need to uh, do for, for that. Um, yeah, let's switch back to the presentation. We have one more slide. <coughs> oh. That's, that's more complicated than I would have thought. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, okay, Cloud okay, Foundry okay. sucks you in. Once you are there, it doesn't let you go yeah, anymore. I should have prepared <laughs> this. Okay. Yeah, we have, to, uh, we have done the demo. So what's next? Uh, we're working on that. We will do continuously update uh, the, the, uh, the Bosch stem cell, the Fissile stem cell, the, the, um, the stack, of course. So this is the work which is going on, and it will, of course, continue to go on. Uh, we use OpenSUSE as the community version, so that's, that's what we publish. That's what we provide upstream. Uh, we use uh, SUSE Linux Enterprise um, for our product. So as a customer, you get um, the, the Enterprise version, which code-wise is almost identical. It's uh, OpenSUSE Leap is based on SLE, um, so, so it's um, mostly sharing uh, the same code base. And we do that as much as possible upstream, so we have contributed uh, the code to build the OpenSUSE stem cell to, to the Bosch. We, we are part of the Bosch community. We are working there. Um, so we want to yeah, extend the reach of Cloud Foundry there, make, make it work with um, people who want to use SUSE just as well as with any other operating system. Um, and I mentioned that. Uh, the stem cell, I think, that, that is, works nicely. Um, uh, there's not too much to, to do there other than adding um, support for our operating system. For the build packs, we ran into a little bit more trouble. So this is an area where we, in the future we might want to look into how we can actually streamline how, how we build them. Because a lot of the binaries which are built there, a lot of the uh, compiling which is happening there, stuff we would do anyway for the packages for the distribution. So maybe leveraging our build system, we, we can uh, have a more efficient and a uh, nicer process, maybe also contributing things upstream to, in general, improve the build process there. Yeah, so that's what we wanted to tell you about the SUSE stack and the SUSE stem cells. And uh, yeah, we're open to questions. <coughs> uh, 
Um, one question. You mentioned that you had to introduce Fissile in the pipeline. Um, can you point out if you um, had to exchange the Diego, the, the app runtime, um, application runtime um, by Fissile, or um, was it only necessary to, to move the, the Cloud Foundry services like the, the Cloud Controller and so on uh, more in a lightweight s situation, or was it to, uh, to make the deployment of the Cloud Foundry um, smaller? Uh, or a mix of it. Yeah, so we are still using Diego, so we are using the certified set of components. Uh, so Diego is part of that, and we use that, which is running in, in a container, so we have this container in a container, uh, which isn't a big deal, um, uh, but we use the certified components. So the Cloud Foundry services, they are running containerized, that's different to, to the standard uh, Cloud Foundry distribution, and that, that actually makes it possible to, to run them in a much more compact form. So like, like being able to run it on a laptop, that's, that's not possible if you have to start or, or the virtual machines Bosch requires to, to run Cloud Foundry. So this, this is where, where it's getting compact. Uh, other than that, it's really a clean layer. Just FISA translates the, the full Cloud Foundry release into containers, and we run these set of containers. So uh, this is great. Um, one thing I have a question about is, did you guys get a chance to test um, like the scalability of, the, of that solution in terms of now you have a Cloud Foundry. Uh, how does that compare to when you do it on top of uh, VMs in terms of you know how many apps can I push and so on, things like that? Yeah. So uh, at the moment, we're at an early stage. So our first product release will, will be end of the year. So, so we, we haven't gotten much uh, real-world real deployments yet. So the scaling test, I think we, we are, it's probably something Troy can answer in, in a better way. Um, so, so we have inherited uh, a, a lot of the code and, and the experience from, from the HPE uh, uh, people. And uh, it was a product before. So, so there, there is some experience there. With, with our new product, uh, we, at the moment, we are, we are not yet at a stage we are, where we are doing extensive uh, scaling tests. But we'll get there. I don't, my answer is no, we haven't done it yet. <laughs> <laughs> but we, uh, we have been asked to give a, a performance comparison between a regular, because we can do it with our, so, so what I want to point out is all of this work works with a uh, standard Bosch deployment as well. So when we do that performance test, we're going to do it with the Open, OpenSUSE um, stem cell in a regular Bosch deployment against uh, one that's been fissilized and running on Kubernetes. So we can do an apples to apples comparison. Yep. Any more questions? There's one there. Um, I was wondering, we just learned yesterday that Kubo will become a container runtime as part of Cloud Foundry. And now you're telling me that you put Cloud Foundry on a containerized environment. This seems redundant, so I'm wondering if uh, I write an application as a container, what benefit do I get putting it on a Cloud Foundry running on a container runtime instead of putting it on the container runtime directly? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, <laughs> it's, it's, um, uh, I think there are different use cases. And, and we are talking here about what we have done for Cloud Foundry. We are running on top of Kubernetes. Um, it doesn't really matter where this Kubernetes is coming from. So it could be one deployed by Kubo. It could be something uh, uh, deployed through, an, through another product, like, like our product as well. Um, but then uh, how, the, there is, of course, some overlap and redundancy, maybe, but uh, that's something which is probably out of the scope of what we are discussing here. But yeah, I don't something? think this actually. So I think the question you're asking is, why would I deploy in Cloud Foundry instead of Kubernetes? I think that's present whether or not this work exists at all. You know, that's just a you know, what user experience do I want? What developer experience do I want? You know, deploying Cloud Foundry on top of Kubernetes. Um, you know, the fact that it's on top of Kubernetes, I would think that should be invisible to the developer. You know, just that's just an IS layer there. They don't, they don't, shouldn't know or care about that. That's my perspective. Yeah, yeah. For the developer, the story is run it in the cloud for me. I don't care how. Uh, but for an operator, of course, it makes a difference what what you are running. And if you have a Kubernetes and you want to run Cloud Foundry on top of that, then you are in a situation where you probably want to go a route like this. If you are using Bosch to deploy uh, your Cloud Foundry, then you probably wouldn't look into that. Okay. 
don't see any other questions, so then thanks a lot.